Did that ending necessarily make sense? No, but the vibe was Hello everybody, it's your girl Jay and today I am here with my May wrap up for 2024. I read a total of 33 books this month and this is the final part three of this wrap up where I will talk about the last 11 books that I read. So without further ado, let us get started. The first book that I have is Every Time You Hear That Song by Jenna Voris and I give this a 4.5 out of 5 stars. This book follows 17 year old Darren who is an aspiring journalist. Her favorite country singer, Deckley Castle, has just passed away but she has left a string of clues for her fans, leading to unreleased music and a cash prize. So Darren takes off with her co-worker Kendall in order to discover these clues and find that cash prize. I actually haven't read a lot of road trip books, but I thoroughly enjoyed this one. I listened to it on audiobook, and I think that's definitely the way to go. I think the narrator did such an incredible job bringing these characters to life. This is actually told through alternating timelines in the present during this road trip, but then also flashbacks to the 1960s where we follow Deckley's career. I think that the hunt for the time capsule was very fun, but I was more intrigued by Deckley's chapters. She was in no means a likable character, but I don't know, something about her, you couldn't help but root for her as her career progressed. It broke my heart having to watch her hide her true self, especially when it came to McKinley Hooper. Their relationship was honestly very toxic, but I couldn't help but hope that they worked out in the end. I really loved how the timelines subtly interwove with each other where we would find a clue and then we would get that flashback on how it was relevant to Deckley's career. I also thought that Kendall and Darren's relationship was very sweet and I really liked watching their relationship grow as their search for the clues happened. The ending was also such a surprise for me. I did not see it coming, which I should have because there were definitely some little clues sprinkled throughout, but I absolutely loved it. I will definitely be looking for more road trip books in the future, so if you have any, leave them down below because I would love to check them out, but I really like this one 4.5 out of 5. The next book I have is Push the Envelope by Rochelle Page, and I gave this a 2 out of 5 stars. So this follows Alexa, who is a junior in college. She occasionally flies planes with her father doing these mile-high club charters. Boys aren't really on her radar after she had a very bad breakup with her ex, but then she meets Drake, a rugby player, who immediately starts showing his interest in her, and it's kind of the story of their relationship. I honestly don't really know how to feel about this one because at times I really enjoyed the story and I liked Drake, but other times he completely rubbed me the wrong way. I really like how he gave Alexa the time to become comfortable with him and their relationship. I think that he was very in tune with her emotions when it came to that. But then on the other hand, he was very possessive and the end conflict really pissed me off. It literally never would have happened if Drake had just spoken to Alexa instead of immediately going and accusing her and trying to intimidate her. I just think he was way out of line for that and it was an immediate dislike for me after that. But I did really like Alexa, especially when she stood up to Drake and told him where to go. I think that the best part of this book was Alexa and Aubrey's friendship. I would have rather had a whole book focusing on that, but it was a romance, so obviously we're not going to get that, but they were very sweet together. But yeah, it was a good time up until that conflict and then I was just like, nope, can't do it. So two out of five stars. Next up, we have The Intern by Michelle Campbell and I give this one a 3.5 out of five stars. So this one follows Harvard Law student Madison Rivera and she has just landed an internship with Judge Catherine Connery. This internship should boost her career by tenfold once she graduates, but she is hiding a very big secret from the judge. Her brother Danny has just been arrested on drug charges and Catherine is the judge on his case. After accusing Connery of corruption, Danny goes missing and Madison discovers that she is probably not the only one with secrets. This was a fun thriller, but it wasn't anything that like blew me out of the water. It does start off rather slowly, but it does pick up pace as more things are revealed. I personally liked it better once we started getting the judge's point of view as well. I think that her backstory was very intriguing and I wanted to know more about her. I think that the story definitely focuses more on the judge rather than Madison. There were also quite a few characters that were all related in some way, which made it a little bit difficult to keep track of them, but it wasn't too overwhelming and I did enjoy my time, so I gave it a 3.5 out of 5 stars. Next, I read Didn't See That Coming 
This is by Jessie Q. Sutano, and I gave this one a 3.5 out of 5 stars as well. So this one follows Kiki, who is a confident 17-year-old who loves to play games online. In order to avoid the harassment that comes with being a girl gamer, she decides to create a gamer tag that sounds very male. This school year, she actually switches schools, and it doesn't start off on the best foot. She is not celebrated for her confidence the way she is used to. She turns to gaming for Solace and she discovers that her online best friend Sour Dog actually attends her school so now she needs to decide whether or not she is going to reveal her true identity to him or not. This is a companion novel to Well That Was Unexpected but I didn't read that book and I still understood what was going on. There are a few mentions of the characters from the first book, but nothing to make it too confusing if you were to decide just to read this. This book is definitely geared towards a younger audience, but I still enjoyed my time reading it. I thought it was pretty cute. I read this on audio and I think that Kiki was a very fun character. I think that the narrator really made her shine. I think she was very spunky and I really liked how she always stood up for what she believed in. Maybe not always in the best ways, but I really liked how she never backed down, especially from the boys. It was quite predictable, but I do think that the romance between Kiki and Sourdough was very cute and I really think that the timing of the reveal was very well done. The book dives into topics such as toxic masculinity, cyberbullying, bullying, and sexism in a very digestible way, and like I said, I did enjoy it so I gave it a 3.5 out of 5 stars. Next up I read Lore of the Wild. This is by Anna Lee Sabrana and I gave this one a 3 out of 5 stars. So this follows Lore and the people of Duskmere who are trapped in their village from a magical forest. After a natural disaster wreaks havoc on the village, Lore makes a deal with a fey lord in the desperate attempt to save her village. In exchange for rebuilding the village, she must catalog his mysterious library of books that no fae has been able to enter. When she finds a magical grimoire, she harnesses its magic and she discovers that her village is still in danger. So she decides to take matters into her own hands by harnessing this magic and saving her village by herself. I was initially drawn to this book because I think that the cover is just gorgeous. I think that this had so much potential, but it fell a little bit flat for me. I think that the ending was the best part. I did not see that twist coming at all. I was very blindsided. So I am definitely intrigued to see where the story goes from here. Did that ending necessarily make sense? No, but the vibe was very cool. So I'm gonna go with it and just see what happens. I wasn't the biggest fan of either of the romances. I kind of felt that they were a bit forced in my opinion. I think that Asher was very insta-lovey, which I never really enjoy unless it's done in a very specific way. I did like Finn more than Asher, but I am a sucker for enemies to lovers. But I do wish that there were more scenes of Finn being more affectionate towards Lore, so it was a little bit more believable that he actually did care for her. I was also a little bit disappointed about the fox companion because it's brought into the book and I thought it was going to be like a thing, but it's very quickly forgotten about and then randomly brought back in at the end. I just personally think that the author could have done so much with the fox companion, so it kind of sucked that it was just kind of wave to the side. This was also targeted towards being an adult fantasy, but I think, except for like one spicy scene, this could have easily been targeted towards a young adult audience and probably would have been a little bit more effective. The Enchanted Library was definitely my favorite part of the story. I do wish that we had spent more time in that place, but like I get why Lore had to make a run for it, but I was very intrigued by the magic system. Definitely want to see where that goes in the next book, so I will pick up the second one if I get my hands on a copy, but yeah. 3 out of 5 stars. Next, I have The Dangerous Ones by Lauren Blackwood. I gave this one a 3 out of 5 stars as well. This one takes place in 1863 and follows a young black woman named Jerusalem. She is a saint, which means that she has demigod-like abilities. After escaping slavery one year ago, she joins the Union and she is taught to fight by Alexi, who is a 3,000-year-old vampire. With her weapon of choice, a spear in hand, she sets off with the rest of the Union to go fight the Confederate, which includes the vampire who enslaved and murdered her family. I love me 
a vampire book and I think that this one had so much potential but it definitely fell a little bit flat for me. This takes place during the Civil War which could have been really cool but there was so many modern words thrown into the story that I forgot that it was during this time frame until it would be mentioned again. I also think that the romance was very strange. It was almost abusive in a way. I think that Jerusalem was so ridiculously mean to Alexi and I didn't really fully understand why he liked her so much. She was just always constantly hitting him or verbally abusing him that I couldn't get behind the romance. But I did love the idea of the revenge. We all know at this point I am a sucker for a revenge story, so I do like how that played out in the end, but overall I give it a 3 out of 5 stars. Next up I read Sinner's Isle. This is by Angela Montoya and I gave this one a 4 out of 5 stars. So this follows Rosa Linda. She is a majestic and she is trapped on Sinner's Isles with the rest of the majestics who are witches with powerful abilities. She is desperate to escape before she is married off to the highest bidder and that allows them to harness her powers. Mariano is the prince of pirates and he is led to Rosa when his ship is wrapped on a sinner's isle and a stone that his late father gave him leads him to his heart's desire. Rosa immediately begins blackmailing him in order to save her friend and escape the isle that has been keeping her prisoner. This has been pitched as Pirates of the Caribbean meets Serpent and Dove and I can definitely see that comparison. I really enjoyed this book. I can't believe that it is a debut. I read it in an audiobook and I think that the narrator did an amazing job. I think that the Majestics were so cool and I wanted to know about each and every one of their unique abilities. I thought that Rosalinda was such a great character. My heart ached for everything that she has endured so far. I loved the dual point of view between Rosa and Mariano. I think that having been able to see inside both of their heads really enhanced the story. I felt their chemistry right from the beginning. I think that the slow burn of their romance was really well done. I also really loved the found family aspect of this. Santi is one of my favorite characters. I need more of him immediately. I honestly feel like if I reread this book, I would give it a 5 out of 5 stars because it was just so enjoyable, but I don't think I got like the full essence of it because I listened to it while I was at work doing other things, so I really should reread it and see if it is a five star read for me, but really enjoyed it, four out of five stars. Next up, we have The Ministry of Time. This is by Colleen Bradley, and I gave this one a three out of five stars. So this follows Graham Gore. He was a commander of an expedition to the Arctic in 1845. He is plucked from his time period before his death by the British government. His bridge is tasked with allowing him to have a smooth transition into the 21st century, but the two of them didn't expect to fall for each other and it's kind of their love story. I think that this was a very interesting concept, but I was honestly so bored with this up until the very end of the book when it suddenly became a spy thriller. I think that the chapters were just way too long for my own personal taste, which made the story drag. I did like the romance. I think that it progressed in a very natural way. It was very slow burn, which is understandable because Graham has to adjust to his new surroundings. I like the supporting characters of Arthur and Margaret. They are two other expats who are plucked from two different timelines. I think that they brought a lot of joy to the story, but like I said, I was just too bored for the majority of it, so I gave it a three out of five stars. The next book I read was Amelia. This is by A.W. Renee, and I gave this one a three out of five stars. This is a horror novella told over several months through letter format from a mother to her daughter Amelia, which shows the slow downward spiral of this woman's mental health. Like I said, this is a novella, so it was a very quick read. I'm a big fan of an unreliable narrator, and this woman takes the cake, let me tell ya. I really loved how this was told in letter format and how you see this woman become more and more unhinged as these letters progress. I think that it wrapped up very nicely with the inclusion of the 911 calls and the police reports. 
I think that it was a very satisfying conclusion. It was a three out of five stars. Very, very quick read, but still a lot of fun. And if body horror and like bugs are not your thing, maybe skip this one. But if you can handle that, I would pick it up. Next up, I have The Curse of Penrith Hall. This is by Jess Armstrong, and I give this one a 3.5 out of five stars. This takes place after the war when American heiress Ruby Vaughn makes a new life for herself after a scandal back home. She now lives in Exeter working in a bookshop. She is tasked with delivering a box of books to the Peller named Ruin Kivill who lives in Cornwall which just so happens to be where her ex-best friend Tamsin lives. Tamsin lives with her new husband Sir Edward Chensworth and their young son in Penrith Hall. After a very awkward dinner, Sir Edward's body is found in the orchard the next morning and a talk of a curse leaves Ruby in place. Ruby teams up with the Peller in order to discover who murdered Sir Edward and who may be coming for her next. I didn't love this, but I also didn't hate it. I never really felt connected to any of the characters. I was more invested in the mystery aspect of this. I did want to know more about the Peller and the curse. I did like Ruby and Ron together. I do think that their romance was compelling enough. I did like their constant bickering and I do think that their dynamic was interesting. I really did not like Tamsin and I could not understand why Ruby was so enamored by her. I listened to this on audiobook. I think that the narrator did a really good job with the characters and their accents so I give it a 3.5 out of 5 stars. It was and then the final book that I will be talking about for this part of the wrap-up is Every Time I Go on Vacation Someone Dies. This is by Catherine Mack and I gave it a 4 out of 5 stars. This follows Eleanor Dash who is a best-selling author. She is currently on a European tour in Paris for her latest mystery thriller novel. She finds herself wrapped up in a real-life murder mystery when somebody is trying to murder her once muse Connor Smith. Eleanor must unravel the clues in front of her before she becomes the next victim. This was such a fun popcorn thriller you could not help but fall in love with this cast of characters and the shenanigans that they found themselves in. It is so over-the-top and corny. We start off by learning that Eleanor had this really amazing fling with Connor when they were in their 20s and that sparked her to write her first book featuring Connor as one of the main characters. When she tells him about the books he decides that he actually needs a cut of her success and basically blackmails her into giving him a cut of her profits. I thought it was the funniest thing that Eleanor had already written nine books featuring Connor because that was what the people wanted and she so desperately wanted to kill him off in the 10th book. It felt like Eleanor was talking to her readers which I think was very clever. We got her retelling the mystery as if it was her 10th book and we also got the inclusion of footnotes which I thought was really fun. I listened to this one on audiobook and I think that doing it that way really helped with the footnotes because it was read almost like the footnotes were included in the story. I really loved Eleanor. I think that she was so funny and I actually listened to this on audiobook and I really liked how the footnotes seemed like it was Eleanor breaking that fourth wall. This is also sprinkled very heavily with Taylor Swift references so you know I was a sucker for that but if you are not a fan of Taylor Swift this might not be for you because there is a lot but I am definitely intrigued in picking up the rest of the series once it's released. It was so much fun but definitely listen to it on audiobook if you get the chance. Four out of five stars. All right everybody those were the last 11 books that I read for the month of May. I read a total of 33 this month which is insane so if you guys want to check out the the first 22 bucks that I read then parts one and two will be up on my channel you can find the links down below but let me know down below if you read any of these books and what you thought of them and I will see you all in my next video goodbye